Hello and welcome to this video course on WordPress security. So what I want to do now is to give you some basics. We're going to talk about the video course as a whole. And then of course, we'll talk a little bit about the reasons why most WordPress websites get hacked. So this is video number one, the introduction. So let's talk about the reality. The reality is that most businesses do not think about WordPress security until it is too late. And the reason being is that a lot of times you're just not thinking about that. But the reality is that online business is just the same as offline business. Now, whether you use your WordPress website for running your business or either maybe a informational website, it doesn't matter. As long as you have a WordPress site, this includes that. So you see in offline businesses where criminals will come in and steal their stuff. On the online realm, it's a lot much worse because people have automated bots or automated systems that their goal is to go out there and to hack your WordPress sites. Now, one big question is, is WordPress secure? And the big answer to that is yes. If you install a WordPress site, the WordPress code is secure. The reason why WordPress sites get hacked is because of several reasons. So what I've done here is for the next videos, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, I'm going to dive in to each individual ways to protect your site. So video number two, we have backdoors. Backdoors are basically plugins or themes or any type of third party code that you bring in to your WordPress site. And what that does is it opens up doors, especially if the plugin was not created correctly or the theme was not created correctly or they just are not updated. So we're going to talk more about that in more depth. Video number three, we'll talk about WordPress hosting and why if you run a WordPress site, it's better off to have a WordPress hosting web host. And we'll go into the reasons why that is the case. In video number four, we'll talk about brute force attacks on the login page. Now, this specific attack is generally done by robots or computers, and they're very intelligent computers. So they will guess and guess and guess until they can find your username and your password. And of course, video number five, we'll talk about different security plugins. There are different security plugins that solve different needs. And we'll go into more depth in that video. Video number six is two-step authorization. Basically what that means is you are creating a way to log in and then a way to log in in the secondary way. And there's many approaches to that. Sometimes you're using things like Google Authenticator or something else to basically verify that you are who you are. So what you're doing is a lot of banks use this. So you're bringing in what banks use into your WordPress site. Video number seven, we'll talk about hot linking. Video number eight, we'll talk about password protection. So here's what you need. You're going to need to have WordPress web hosting. It's not necessarily mandatory, but you definitely need to have a web host that supports WordPress sites. And of course, most do, but some don't. And of course, last but not least, you will need some money to invest better now than later. There have been many companies who have not invested in WordPress security simply because it costs a little bit of money. But if you see your website as an asset, as a business asset, especially, or a nonprofit asset, that's very important to you, you should protect it. So with that said, let's move on to the next video. 
Okay, welcome back. In this particular video, we're going to talk about backdoors. Backdoors are basically any type of plugin, theme, or any type of third party code that is inserted into a WordPress site after the initial WordPress install. Now, this is kind of going to open your eyes a little bit, but WordPress plugins, the more you install, the more at risk you become. And here's the reason why. The reason why is because WordPress at its core, a lot of times they will come out with updates and major updates over the years to come. And those updates often include security patches. Now, bear in mind that the plugin or the theme. So let's say, for example, that you buy a WordPress plugin or a theme and it hasn't been updated over the years. What ends up happening is it creates backdoors. And if the code has not been created correctly, then it also creates backdoors as well. Backdoors are essentially what it sounds like. You're in a house and your backdoor is open. So somebody can simply walk in. A hacker can walk in and they can hack your site. They can point your site to different other sites and so forth. So that's just a gist of what we're talking about here. Now, how do you know if a WordPress plugin or a theme is good or not, or is secure or not? So number one, do they update frequently? If they update frequently, that is a good sign. Number two, have you figured that out? Okay, so how do we go about figuring it out? So a lot of times what you can do is you can look at the plugin and you click on view details. And any type of WordPress plugin that is uploaded to the WordPress depository will have what we call a change log. So you'll go here, you'll click on change log, and you'll be able to see all the changes that has happened over the years. Now, do you need to do this for every single plugin and theme? Not necessarily. The third thing is, is the company that has built this plugin widely known or well-respected? If that is the case, then probably and most likely they have a group of coders that are constantly updating their plugins or themes and or third party code. If we take a look at this particular plugin, which is a Kismet anti-spam plugin, this is actually created by the parent company of WordPress. So obviously they have released a lot of updates. So we can see May 2019, January 2019, November 2018. So it's a good thing when you begin to see updates at least several times per year, or at least once or twice per year over time. But if you go and check out a WordPress plugin and you see that it has only been updated once for the past three, four years, that's probably a bad sign. It doesn't necessarily mean that that WordPress plugin or theme has a back door. It just means that the possibilities are there. And it's also anyways, good to find a coder that has constantly updated their theme anyways. So what you want to do, so let's say for example, that we head on over to a site called code Canyon. Dot net. That's codecanyon.net. So if you go to the site, this site basically sells WordPress plugins and WordPress themes. Now, if we go under code and we go under WordPress and we go down here, most of these are most likely to be updated frequently, especially WP Bakery, which is a page builder plugin. Now, as we scroll down, if we just use this as an example, let's just open this up and take a look at it. 
Okay, so we see that there are a large amount of sales and a large amount of reviews. That's a good thing. But what we want to do is we want to figure out, have they updated the site frequently? Or the plugin in this case, or theme. So if you scroll all the way down in Code Canyon, you will see the change log. So we can see here, it says July 2019, July 2019, May 2019. So that's a good sign when you see that a vendor has updated their plugin on an ongoing basis. Now, if we scroll down, we can see 2018. So most likely this vendor has been going on beyond 2018. So maybe even 2015, but they don't want to include too much of the change log because the old updates aren't as important as the new updates, or that's something that you might not really want to know. So that's that. And let's say, let's pick another plugin. Let's go down here. And let's look at one with no sales. Now, I'm not necessarily trying to pick on a specific plugin. I'm simply just showing you what to look for. And that way you can do your due diligence. So let's just take a look at this one. Maybe this one. And there we go. So if we scroll down, there's no change log. There's no sales. And as we go through here, there's three comments. So as we can see, there are problems right off the bat. The demo's not working. Uh, how can I trust your product? And so forth. So generally speaking, from the perspective of reviews, most of the time you will have typically one out of a hundred or even one out of a thousand people will actually leave reviews. But in this case, we can see that it has zero sales. So that's an example of perhaps something you want to stay away from. All right, so I wanna give you practical examples. So this one here, it has a change log back in 2015. So obviously right now it's 2019. You might be watching this video in 2020. Regardless, if that's the case, I would not buy this plugin. So I wanted to show you this as an example of plugins that are updated constantly and evolving over the years versus plugins that are static, that haven't changed or anything like that. So that's basically what you're looking for. And as you can see, that's pretty simple. So the same goes for themes as well. So if you go under, let's say, this is code Canon. So they actually have another site called themeforest.net. So let's go over there right now. And WordPress, so we'll go to the WordPress. And let's apply the same exercise that we applied earlier. So we can see best sellers. So let's just go ahead and open these up like so. And scroll down. Let's see if they have a change log. Now, as I am scrolling down, I do not see a change log. So if you don't see a change log, you can simply go to google.com and type in change log. And of course, the name of the plugin and the theme. So in this case, we see the Avada change log. We go to here and let's see if that's what they have. So there it is. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we can see that it has evolved beyond 2015. Now if we scroll back to the top, we can see that there are tons and tons and tons and tons of updates. And that's a good sign. That means they most likely have a team of coders that are coding this particular plugin or theme. So we can see 2019, August 28th, that's just two months ago, or actually one month ago.
So that's the technique that I would use in terms of practical terms of finding a reliable theme or plugin. So you can do the same thing with WordPress plugins that are inside the depository. So if you go up here, you click on add new, and let's pick one of these. And I did a search on comment moderation, and we can see some of these have a good amount of reviews, but then some of them don't really have a lot of reviews at all. So let's just take a look at this one and click on more details right here. Go to change log and we see that there's not really a whole lot of information. Now, sometimes you might not find the change log on that page. So you'll have to go uh, do a little bit of research to go to the plugin homepage and get an idea based on that. Now, not everybody re leaves reviews. Like I said, so 29 reviews, but 1000 plus active installations. So you can't really look at this. You have to look at the change log. So I hope that makes sense. We're going to stop right there before we give you way too much information and we'll move on to the next video. Hello and welcome this particular video. We're going to talk about web hosting for WordPress. Now, before I talk about anything related to web hosting, what I want to do right now is to give you an analogy. So let's say, for example, that you're sick, your heart's not feeling good and you have heart problems. If you go to a general practitioner and you tell them about your heart, a lot of times they may know a little bit if they're really experienced, but if it's a very specific thing about your heart, then most likely they are not going to know. Because a lot of times general family physicians, a lot of them know a lot of information because they see a lot of things, but they don't know in depth detail about spe specialized areas. So that's why we have what we call specialists. For example, you have a cardiologist in this case. So what he would do is normally do a lot of tests and over time, if he can't figure out what you have, then he'll send you to a cardiologist and the cardiologist you'll go to and he'll look at your heart and he'll know exactly what to look for most of the time. And he'll run some tests that are related to the heart, such as an echo cardiogram, a treadmill test and other tests that are related to the heart. Now, if you were to ask the cardiologist about something related to your kidneys that are related to a cardiologist, they may not necessarily know. So in that case, they will begin to send you to a urologist. Makes sense. So the same goes for web hosting, and this is the best way to explain it. Now I start with knownhost.com because this is one of the sites that we have used over the years and it's great. Now I'm not necessarily saying that if you host on a specific web host that is not specialized in WordPress, that it's not secure. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that most of the time, if you go to a host that specializes in WordPress, their team are going to be highly specialized on WordPress. They are going to know everything or at least everything about WordPress. So a lot of times if you run into an issue with a plugin or something's not working on your WordPress site, or you might get malware or you might get hacked, they are going to know how to fix it. Whereas if you go to another web hosting company that is not specialized in WordPress, a lot of times you'll ask them questions about WordPress and they may not necessarily know the answers to that. And that's based on our experience, not to say that any generalization or anything like that, that's just based on our experience. So what we have begun to do over the years is simply to move our WordPress sites over to specialized web hosts that specialize in WordPress. So that's the reason why 
we recommend finding a web hosting company that specialize in WordPress. So I know I'm going around saying the same thing, but I really wanted to drill that into your minds. So with that said, there is a particular web hosting that we have tested called WPX Hosting. They're actually fairly cheap compared to that of other web hosting companies. Now, I want to make sure that you understand if you have a WordPress site and then, of course, you have other scripts on that site that are not related to WordPress at all, then you might want to stick with a web hosting company like this or a web hosting company that is more of a general practitioner slash family physician type kind of analogy, if that makes sense. Now, if you simply have a WordPress site, you don't have any other scripts or anything like that that are outside of the WordPress folder, then this is the way to go. And the reason being is for speed, security, and support. So we've tested WPX hosting, very, very cheap pricing. So if we go here to pricing, you'll get an idea of what it costs. So as you can see here, it's $20 per month. That of course may change based on the annual plan and the $41 for the annual plan. And it gives you about five websites and 15 websites for this. Now I want to say upfront that we are in no way connected to WP hosting. We are simply users of this web host. Now, another great thing is a lot of times you will have to connect your WordPress site to some sort of CDN or content delivery network, such as Cloudflare. But with WPX hosting, they actually have their own version of Cloudflare built in. So instead of having to pay for web hosting plus Cloudflare and all of that, the above, as you know, Cloudflare costs about this amount per site sometimes or per several sites. So this is why this is a no brainer. So as you can see, you got this. Now, the nice thing about WPX hosting is that it also offers backups. It offers daily backups. Now, most, of course, web hosting companies, they offer backups, but a lot of times they only do once a month or once a week. What's nice about WPX hosting is that it will actually allow you to back up every single day. So if you, let's say, for example, let's pick out a calendar month, let's say December, and you decide that you want to, let's say it's December 31st, and you want to move and revert back to December 12th, because you remember that's around the time that you installed a plugin and maybe the site screwed up or anything like that. So you can simply click a button and it'll revert back to that state for that day. And that's nice because to be honest, we haven't really seen that with a lot of other web hosting companies. In addition to that, their support is phenomenal. If you have any question related to WordPress, they will actually help you. And if they don't know, they'll research it as well. But and most of the time we found that they are very experienced. They know a lot about WordPress. So think about this as the cardiologist or the specialist. So this is why we recommend WPX. There are other hosting that specialize in WordPress, such as WPEngine.com. This is a phenomenal web hosting company. They ha are well known. They are huge and they run a lot of WordPress sites. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention was that WordPress sites, a lot of times they will use a lot of server CPU or resources. So that's why a lot of these companies, they have servers and virtual private servers, or they just have an environment that was made for WordPress. Whereas the other web hosting companies, it's just a general thing. So you might have to upgrade your plan to a higher plan 
in order to match that of a lot of these WP Engine or WPX hosting. Now, in addition to that, a lot of these sites will actually offer free malware cleanup. So if you were to get hacked, you have malware, somebody is using your site to redirect to another site, or they've maybe defaced your site, WPX will go in there and they will fix it for free. That, of course, included in your plan. We'll talk about other services that you can use to connect to your web hosting company. Let's say that you have a web host that you really love and you don't want to go this route. We will show you other ways to go about getting your malware cleaned up. But bear in mind that those costs, additional costs, such as anywhere from $99 to about $200 per year. So I wanted to give you different options to go different routes and this is it. So with that said, let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome back. In this particular video, we're going to talk about how to hide your WP-admin login page. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, if you think about why people hack or how people hack, a lot of times they're using bots to go to your WP-admin login page. So here's what I mean by that. If you go to www.yourdomain.com slash WP-admin, that's the page that we are talking about. So you have to go to that specific URL to log in to your WordPress administrator dashboard. So if you have automated bots that are going to that particular page, and then of course they are trying to guess what your password might be, then that's a problem, right? And not only that, they may not guess it, but the fact that they're hammering your website over and over and over again, that's not a good thing. So it could be using your bandwidth and they could potentially do what we call a DDoS attack and take down your website if they really wanted to. Now, because most of these systems are bots and they're not really a live human being, a good way to get around this is to change the wp-admin. So instead of having wp-admin, you could have anything that you want. So we don't recommend that you use your name, your website name, or anything like that, because that those are common usernames that these bots will try to hack. So in essence, what we can do, let's say, let's say we have a blog about scuba diving. So we can say something like scoo diving, something like that, and that's it. It's as simple as that. So now what we need to do is get a plugin that does that. There are many different plugins that can do this, but in one particular WPS hide login, it's free. You don't have to invest any money. You can do it with this. This is a really good plugin to use. So as you can see, if we click to click on screenshots and scroll down, looks like this is in a different language, but in essence, all you have to do is simply click on the settings and then enter what you want it to be. So in this case, it's login, but we don't want that. You want to enter whatever is right here. So if we go back to our WordPress administrator dashboard right here is WPS hide login. So type in WPS hide login and that's it. So go ahead and activate that, install it, choose your folder and that's all you have to do. So now the bots will not know where your login page is and you don't have to worry about it going to your WP-admin and it's as simple as that. Hello and welcome back. In this particular video, we're going to talk about different WordPress security plugins. And I really want to emphasize the differences between each one of these, because a lot of them, they tackle different things because we have malware. 
there's a firewall to protect against attacks. And there are other plugins as well to protect against other things. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So if you go to the add plugins page and you type in security, you will find these plugins. WordFence is actually one of the most popular ones. They specialize in firewall malware scan. And what I really like about WordFence is that a lot of times they will update you about specific plugins that have been hacked or that have back doors. All right. So that's important because you want to stay on top of that. You might not even know, but these sites are, that's all they do. They focus purely on WordPress security. So they're constantly figuring out different malware, different loopholes, and different backdoors. Another one is all-in-one WordPress security and firewall. It's kind of similar to WordFence. Then we have another one called iTheme Security. That's actually pretty good as well. And a lot of these things actually do the same thing, but then specialize in different areas. Maybe they do a lot of the same things, but they specialize in something like XSS, which basically just means that somebody can hack you because you're utilizing a specific feature in your WordPress site. So without actually going into all of that, just get yourself a WordPress security plugin. Now, there is another plugin called Securi. That's S U C U R I. So S U C U R I. This is free. You can go ahead and click active and install an active. This is basically a malware scanner. Now, the reason why Securi is very reputable is that's all they do. All they do, like WordFence, day and night, is to find malware and secure it. Now, the difference between WordFence and Securi, and, and WordFence might change over the years, is that Securi specializes in cleaning WordPress sites that have been hacked or that have malware. So this is what I was talking about earlier, where you have additional services that you can pay anywhere from $100 to $200 to get them to protect your site. So this is Securi, and this is the plugin here. And on the review page, I'm not gonna go there now, but it'll tell you all the details about your site, any malware, all the checks that it's made, and all that. Now, bear in mind, you do not necessarily have to have Securi, the, the paid version, in order to use the free version. Now, if you get an alert, you get hacked, or anything like that, then that's where you will need Securi. Now, if you go to the pricing, you'll get an idea of the costs. As you can see here, that the bare bone minimum is about $200 a year, and then of course, the $300 a year is the most popular. The, the main differences between these are the scan frequency. So how many times you want to scan more frequently for malware and hacks and all that. So if you were to get somebody to hack your site, then the system would not know until 12 hours later, or the system would not know until six hours later. So... It also includes firewall, which is great. And there you go. So Securi is a very wonderful service. That's something that we have used and tested out as well. But I also want to say WPX hosting includes the malware cleanup. And if you get hacked, they will clean your site. So. That's just something that you'll need to test out, but Securi definitely specializes in malware. So it's kind of like going to Norton Virus, antivirus, and them having a service that cleans up your computer. So that's essentially what this is. So now you know the differences between the two. You got firewall, you have security, and you have all that. 
I highly recommend that you go ahead and install one of these right away. Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about the two-step factor authentication. So what does that mean? Basically, this is kind of what a lot of banks use, but what it does is it will either send you a text message or it will give you a code that you'll need to enter into the login page. So a lot of times the reason why it's called two factor is because you'll have to log in number one, but once you've logged in, you'll have to use some sort of app. So this way you really protect yourself from actually getting a brute force attack. A brute force attack is basically somebody trying to log in to your WordPress site. But in order to do that, they have to guess hundreds of times or even thousands of times what your password might be. Now, we're gonna talk more about password and things to avoid in the future videos when we talk about password protection. But for now, this is basically what we recommend. There are two different plugins that we recommend using. Number one is SecSign, S-E-C sign. So you can find this under the plugins section by typing in S-E-C sign. The way this works and the way that this is a little bit different is that it allows you to use your phone to in your fingerprint to actually log in. So you don't have to remember your password or anything like that. You simply use this to log in. So that's one. And it's all very, very easy to use. I'm not gonna show you how to use it because they're really, really easy to use. So this is gonna be a fairly quick video. So definitely recommend that. So if you go over here and you type in sec sign, this is what it is. Now, the second app that we highly recommend that is actually by Google. Now, the app wasn't made by Google, but it utilizes Google's authenticator. Now, let me explain how this works. So let's say, for example, that you log in, you enter your username and password, and then you're presented with this. Now, you're not gonna see this. This is actually on your mobile phone. And I wanna say I just grabbed an image from the Google Play Store. So this is not really mine, but this is what it looks like. So you're gonna have a mobile app, and then on your computer, you're going to see the login page. So what it's gonna ask is it's gonna ask you to enter a code. Now, the reason why this is really good is you see this little circle here. It looks like a pie chart, but it's actually a circle. This is a timer. It's a 30 second timer that once gone, this number changes. So basically every 30 seconds, the number changes and you get a unique code. So you need to make sure that you can wait till the zero, it changes, and then immediately enter that number into your WordPress login page and you'll get in. The reason why this works really well is because unless somebody really is there, they have your phone and all that, they can't log in. Now, there are other ways that somebody can hack your site. They can do it via other ways, but that's why we highly recommend that you follow this step-by-step -step and you install a WordPress security and firewall plugin. And to install that plugin, you simply go to your plugins page, type in Google Authenticator, click install now, and that's it. Now you do need to connect things, but everything is fairly self-explanatory. And that's it. Hello and welcome to this video on hot linking. So let me explain to you why you want to hot link your files. This includes any type of file on your website. Could be audio files, could be video files, could be images, 
What this does is it basically says and tells the system that the only way that, let's say, a video or an audio can load on your website is if it is actually coming from your website. So in other words, what that means is when somebody clicks on the video, the system will detect that that click is coming from your website. Or let's say you have another website and you want to allow people from that website or that website itself to access your images, your videos, and load it. So that is what hot link protection is. Hot linking is the opposite of protection, obviously, but that basically means that somebody else who has not gotten your permission has placed your images, your videos on their website. Now, if you have hot link protection enabled, they will not be able to load your images or your videos, unless of course they download it and upload it to their web hosting company. But for the most part, most people are lazy that do that. So they'll simply try to link to that particular link. But if you have hot link protection on, then you will be able to protect yourself. Now, if you think about it and you might think, well, that's not a big deal. The reason why it's a big deal is because if somebody else has a site that has a lot of traffic, or maybe you have videos and the videos add up to about a gig. So if they send, let's say they link to your, your zip files or your audio files and your video files, they are using your bandwidth. So as you know, if you're utilizing a web hosting company that you pay for bandwidth. So you might only, let's say, for example, get about a hundred gigabytes of bandwidth. If somebody else is using that, they're basically taking from you and stealing from you and you're having to pay for it. So that's basically what hot linking is. And this is the protection. Now, this method only works if you have the cPanel. And if your web hosting company does not use cPanel, they may have some sort of hot linking protection. You'll need to contact them and contact the support. But for the majority of you who are utilizing the cPanel web hosting panel, this is going to work for you. So all you need to do is simply log in and look for the hot link protection link here. Go ahead and click on that. And here we are. So now what you need to do is simply go down to this box. It says URLs to allow access. So you can enter your domain. So you're going to want to enter www.yourdomain.com. So obviously whatever your domain is, you're also going to want to enter HTTP colon slash slash, and then we're going to copy this over yourdomain.com. So just in case somebody links the HTTP version or without the HTTP version. Now, if you use HTTPS, you might want to do that. Now, what other URLs would you want to allow access to? So maybe you have a sister site. So your sister site.com and you want to allow your sister site to access the images, the videos, the audios, and all the above or the zip files. You can do that. So basically this is kind of the white list or the safe list that has access to your files. Now, if you scroll down, it's going to say block direct access to the following extensions. So even though you have this, you're still going to need to enter the extensions. So for example, if you upload MP3 files, you'll need to include that there. If you have zip files, include that there. If you have MP4 video files, you'll need to include that there. So whatever extensions that you want to protect, you need to enter that here. And the way you find that out is simply by going to your Mac or your PC and it'll tell you the extension and you simply enter that here. And that's it. All you have to do is that. And once you're done, you just click enable and that's it. And you're good to go. 
Hello and welcome back. Let's talk about password protection. There are two ways to look at this. Number one, you'll need a strong password and a username that is not admin. Okay, so let me give you an example and we'll talk about other ways to protect your password. Okay, so most people, when they create their WordPress website and they create the username and their password, they use admin for the username. And that's a no-no because a lot of brute force bots will use admin as the username. You, you might be thinking, well, they don't necessarily know my password. Why does it make a difference? The difference is because once they know your username, they have one less thing to figure out. But if they don't know your username, they, they can't figure out your username, they can't figure out your password, then that's a problem. So we don't recommend admin. In addition to that, if your domain is, let's say for example, yourdomain.com, you don't want your username to be your domain. So without the www dot and then without the dot com. So in other words, your domain, you don't want that as your username because we have seen bots evolve and begin to get smart and they know that you're not going to use admin. So you're probably going to use your domain. You're probably going to also use your name. So they're going to try to gather tons of data about you and use that as your username. So the next thing would be your name, your first name. They'll try the last name you'll they'll try and they'll try your first name and last name together. And of course it's going to evolve. So your username you want to figure out may not necessarily relate to you, but maybe something random. And then of course your password, you're going to want it to be very, very strong. By that, I mean, you don't want it to be your birth date. You don't want it to be your dog's name. You don't want it to be something that is relatable to you. You want it to be something very complex. So let me give you an example of this. Typically with a very strong password, you want to use numbers. You want to use capital letters. So you could do something like this put a bunch of numbers and then lowercase numbers, and then you're going to want to put some characters. So characters, we're going to put shift. These are the characters. So those are characters. So the bot is going to try for the password, different things, different numbers, different variations, different combinations. So you want to make sure that it's very complex. Now, Bear in mind, you're not going to remember this very strong password. So what do you do? Do you write it down on a piece of paper or can you use maybe a password manager? Password managers are actually what we're going to talk about next. There are two that we actually recommend. The first one is LastPass. So LastPass.com for personal use is actually free and there's you don't have to pay anything, but you can also upgrade to the premium. The reason why LastPass is very secure is in order to get access to your account, you have to log in with your master password. Now, if you're utilizing the, the Chrome extension, the mobile app or anything, you have to have that master password. Now, what's interesting is you cannot retrieve that master password from the site. So if you ever were to forget what that master password is, then you may as well say goodbye to your all of your logins. So what I recommend that you do, because this has actually happened before, is to put LastPass on your mobile phone, all of your computers, your laptops, your computers, everything, and that way you keep a backup because if you were to ever forget the master password on your computer, for example, you can still log into it via your smartphone or your other computer. So 
That's the big difference with LastPass and other password managers. Now, LastPass is very secure, especially when you buy the premium version, it's extremely secure. Now, what's nice about LastPass is it will analyze your passwords and it'll actually tell you if your passwords are weak and it will tell you a lot of things. So you can actually store a lot of private information such as bank cards, bank accounts, driver's license, passwords, passports, and more. So it's, it's not just passwords alone. Now, when it comes to passwords, there's another service called RoboForm. RoboForm does cost money. However, uh, based on our experience, RoboForm has been very, very well. Just like LastPass, you can install this on all of your computers, on all of your smartphones, and it's very, very easy to use. Now, you might be asking, well, what's the difference between RoboForm and LastPass? To be frank and honest, both of them are very, very similar, except, like I said, LastPass focuses on other things, other private information. So I recommend just go ahead and pick one of these, LastPass or RoboForm. Either one is good because we've actually tested them out, and that's it. In a recent study done by Securi, around 90% of all hacked content management systems that they investigated and helped fix in 2018 were WordPress sites. So what that means is if you rely on your website for business, whether that means for marketing purposes, for business operations, or anything important, protecting your asset is crucial. So if you haven't done it yet, you need to do it before it's too late. Why? Just like offline businesses, thieves can break into your business. Except when it comes to online security, you may not even know that there's an intruder in your site. And worse, they're using your site and you find out maybe months or years later or you never find out. This is why it's essential to be proactive. Now, I want to say something that's very important. WordPress sites don't get hacked because the original code. In fact, the original code is actually very secure. But due to backdoors from third-party code, plugins, themes, and other codes, what it does is, is it opens up backdoors where thieves can simply walk in. Now, how do you find these backdoors? How do you know if a plugin or theme or third-party code might have a backdoor? Well, we're going to talk about that in that particular video. So that's what backdoors are. So if you're not tech savvy, you don't know how to find backdoors, what are some quick and easy ways to secure your WordPress website safely? So this is going to be a eight part step-by-step -step video course where you're going to discover how to secure your WordPress site. Now this specific training course was designed to help you understand how to secure, how to protect your valuable WordPress site. Now, here's a quick video's overview of what's inside this video course. Video one is the introduction. We'll talk about what you need before you get started. Video number two, we're going to talk about backdoors, how to identify them, how to protect yourself. Video number three, we're going to talk about WordPress hosting, why you should go with a specialized web host that specializes in WordPress. Video number four, we're going to talk about how to protect your WordPress login page. And video number five, we'll talk about different security plugins. Video number six, we'll talk about the two-step authorization plugins, which ones are the best and how they work. And video number seven, we'll talk about how to protect your files. Basically, how to protect them from other people utilizing them, linking to them, and using your bandwidth, which you have to pay for. And of course, last but not least, video number eight, we're going to talk about password protection, how to create a strong password, but also how to manage all of your passwords, especially when you have hundreds or even maybe thousands of passwords. 
So go ahead and grab this video course today and learn how to secure your WordPress site.